Right, how's it going everyone? I thought I'd join the bandwagon and get into these uh, YouTube reviews. I've never I've never done this before really and I've only sort of maybe done a couple of videos on my uh, YouTube channel and if you have a look at them you'll see they're not very well done, I'm not very good at editing and all that kind of stuff. Very new to it but although I'm saying that I would love to learn so I'm going to try and do uh, some videos more often um, and if anybody wants to leave a comment at the bottom if you've got any critique you want to share um, or even any words of encouragement if I get a bit of positivity I might even just have a go and see if I can uh, sort of do some more videos and things like that but anyway I thought I'd do this video so th this is my bike and I've had this bike for nearly, a couple, nearly two years now and I thought I'm going to do a review on it and I'm going to share what my thoughts are and just to give you a little bit of perspective about my background so I'm, I'm a sports bike rider um, sports bikes for a number of years had various R1s and um, BMW S 1000 RRs or the GSXR 1000 before that I had a ZZR 1400 and uh, before that it was like Yamaha sort of phasers and stuff like that um, so I've always kind of liked sportier bikes but but for the last sort of maybe 10 years or so I had sports bikes, pro proper sort of super bike sports bikes I don't, when I say proper I don't mean to be uh, disrespectful Just I'm just talking about 1000cc super bikes I've been running about in. so this for me is a big change um, what I'll do is we'll jump on and we'll go for a wee run and I'll tell you the story about how I ended up on this bike so I actually um, I bought a 2019 BMW S1000RR and it developed a knocking noise, or a knocking feeling in the front suspension and uh, I could feel it through the bars at kind of slow speed and um, I put it in to get it repaired and it was. Uh, it, they told me that it was going to be off the road for about four to five weeks because they had to order new electronic suspension units from Germany um, so they gave me a, an S1000XR to run about in for a couple of weeks and I liked it, it was a nice bike um, very fast bike it, it, because you're upright and you're big wide bars it feels as if you're going faster than you are I think but um, I had the bike for a couple of weeks and I enjoyed it, it was good um, but it wasn't great, it never blew me away um, I just thought, if you want all this performance then just get a sports bike <laughs> but uh, what do you call it? Anyway, after a couple of weeks, I got a phone call from the guy that runs the shop, BMW shop, and he said, look, I need to get you back in with that bike. We've got a customer want to come and see it. Um, if it's okay, I'll give you something else. I'm like, fine, that's fine, no problem. So I heads down to pick the bike up, or to drop the bike off and get another bike, and he gave me a GS. Now, I always thought, I always had a kind of stigma for GS riders. I always thought, oh, here's another GS rider. I want to be round the world adventurer that goes nowhere but Asda or his local Sunday run um, so I had a preconceived idea in my head which is wrong but but, but I did um, but anyway I jumped in this uh, GS and it was a, I think it was a BMW it was a standard not an adventure and it was a TE and it was in a blue colour um, so I took the bike and I, I went away in the bike and I remember going home and thinking this is quite nice um, and then I went out in it that weekend I think with some friends and I thoroughly enjoyed riding it and then um, I think in the three weeks I'd done about close to a thousand miles on it I couldn't put the bike down and uh, so when I went to I got a phone call to tell me my yes a thousand dollar I was ready to collect and I went to collect it and um, I got on the bike to go home and when you jump off a GS and onto an S1000RR it seems like one extreme to the other so I jumped onto the I jumped onto the, 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 the RR and I just thought holy jeez oh man this is this is proper extreme um, I rode it home or I rode it down the motorway and I came off the motorway slip road and I thought back to the shop and on the way back and I asked them to tell me how much it would be to change over lo and behold I bought myself one of these now I have to say it's a great bike it's a it, it, well, it, today is uh, early December in Glasgow and it's bloody freezing it's 5 degrees 
Um, now I've got, uh, I'm lucky to have a nice spec in this bike, so it's got a heated seat, heated bars and stuff like that. But I'm out around the day, and I would never have dreamt of doing that in a sports bike. You just, you, you've got lots of protection behind the big screen. Uh, oh, what's going on here? Let me just give this guy a two, let him know I'm coming. Just let him know I'm coming. Thank you, cheers. Um, so, you've got lots of protection behind this big uh, screen and tank. And um, a heated seat on, heated bars on. It's a nice place to be. It's a really nice place to be. But the thing that I, that I really like about this bike is how torquey it is. It's, it's the mid-range and the, to and the torque that the bike's got. It doesn't feel... Well, I thought when I jumped from the sports bike and I bought this, I thought, oh my god, all that performance. I'm going to miss all that performance. And, you know, I've got a 200 brake horsepower BMW S1000 RR and I'm going to a bike with 136 horsepower. What is that all about? But it, this, this actually feels faster off the map. It's weird. It's got more drive mid-range and low down and it's where you need it when you're on the road it, you, when you've got a super bike of course it's exciting but the power is the power's higher in the rev range and by the time you get access to that power you're absolutely going nuts um, it just doesn't make to me now now I, I get why people want them because there's a there's an ownership um, you know, there's a pride of ownership and you get out to the garage and it's fantastic and all that kind of stuff. I, I get it and I, and I can totally understand it. Um, I can totally understand it. But um, I just have to say, I just love having that low down and mid range grunt now. And I, would, I wouldn't I would trade that for the world away a bike. Um, it's really cool. What's going on here with this guy? Yeah, I, I totally get why people would want a sports bike because I understand the pride of ownership. You're out of the garage and you're looking at something really special in your garage. I totally get that. And I have to say, I do miss that. I do miss that. But it, the, the, I'm more now, the older I get and the more um, experience I've got with bikes, I just want a motorbike that, I'm, that, that, that I enjoy riding. And a motorbike that I want to go out and ride more is the right bike for me in my opinion and I hate myself sometimes for liking this bike because everywhere you go there's loads of these bikes you know there's everybody every, doesn't matter what bike meet you go to there's always three or four GS's there um, and they, whether I like it or whether I don't there is a stigma attached to them but they're a bloody good bike and that's that's why there's so many people got them they, they do ride really nice the Boxer twin engine has got a fantastic power delivery um, it might not sound like the best engine, uh, although I'm starting to like it. But it, it's got a, it's got a really really addictive power delivery. It's um, it's quite uh, it's quite enjoyable to ride, and it's very easy to ride. Um, it's the power is accessible from really low down right through the mid range, and because of this newer, I'm saying because of this new, I don't really have much experience of the old uh, 1200. I never rode one. Um, but I believe this uh, this uh, shift cam in the 1250 it gives it you know the the, the perfect blend between the the, the top end and uh, and the bottom end as well. So um, so would you call it? So I really like it. I really enjoy it. Um, now I know I'm really really lucky to have a bike like this because it's not it's not a cheap bike. It's an expensive bike, and I bought the bike brand new. Um, and I probably and I say this. I, I don't. I say this, but I say this sort of uh, take it with a pinch of salt. I don't see me changing it for a while. Um, and when I say a while, I mean a long time. It's just it does it. I know there's a new GS coming through and it's got more power and all that. But I don't feel it lacks any power. This bike, I think it's perfect for the road. Um, but I love the plushness of it, the comfort of it. Uh, one thing I would say about it. Is when you when you get into a corner with, with the bike and you're sort of maybe pushing on a wee bit, I do find that the telelever suspension is a little bit vague when you're sort of pushing on a bit. I'm not I'm not saying it's a, I'm not saying it's bad because it does handle really well, but I just think that it misses the feel that a conventional fork has when you're when you're pushing into bends. Um, 
and when I say pushing it to Vez, I don't mean going nuts, but just when you're getting a wee bit of a spirited ride on, you do feel a wee bit, oh, but in saying that, in saying that, in saying that, I, I, it was on Michelin Anarchy tyres that I uh, experienced that, I've not really, I got the uh, Pilot Road 6 tyres fitted recently, and I've not really rid- ridden them in anger, I've only done a couple hundred miles in them so far, and it's all been like, like this, um, pretty, uh, pretty naff roads, pretty dirty roads and wet roads, um, one thing I would say that uh, I know that lots of GS owners are criticised because they have these big things that are capable of doing stuff off road, but they never take them off road. Well, I have to go uh, uh, three different off road off road days now, and although they've not been mad off road, it has been off road. It's been like green laning, um, off the beaten track. It's in roads that, that are no longer used as well. And it, I, f- I tell you what, I've had more fun doing that in the last uh, last year. Than I've had on motorbikes, full stop. For, since I since I got into motorbikes, it was great fun, absolutely brilliant fun, and um, and I do plan to do more of that. And I know I fitted Pilot Road Six tyres, which are not really for that, but I, I, it, it'll be fine. I'm not doing anything major taxing. It's just I'm just going off the beaten track a wee bit uh, and, and and some green lane and stuff. And if you haven't done that type of thing and you've got a bike and you're on an adventure bike, go and give it a go. Just have a look at the. Um, the old maps and look for dis- disused roads. Um, doesn't need to be like green lane stuff, like uh, really bad stuff, but just dis- road, disused roads and things. Go and, go and explore, go off the beaten track um, because I've done it now a few times and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. It's been great fun. Um, and I wouldn't have done that had I not been on a bike like this. I would never have done that in a sports bike. So for me, it's. For me, this bike ticks all the boxes because I can push on if I want to, albeit it's got a wee bit of a vague front end compared to any the sort of sports bikes I had, but I'm not going as quick as I used to go. But you can push on in it. Um, you can tour in absolute comfort on it. I was at uh, Isle of Man earlier on this year at the TT, uh, way over with the guys, and um, I had it all fully loaded up with all my stuff, and away I went in comfort um, and a few of the guys that are on about have still got sport bikes and you know they've got uh, they were sort of um, rubbing it in because I had like <coughs> a deck chair and things like that uh, strapped to the back of the bike and just I've got loads and loads of stuff that you would, that I didn't need but I took because I had the space just to make the trip a wee bit more enjoyable and the guys that were with me were all laughing just like what are you doing man that's, that's funny but um you know, it, it, it just when you're riding a bike like this, it just it, it gives you more options to do more things, and that's what I like about it. Do I miss having a sports bike? Absolutely, of course I do. Um, but do I miss it enough to sell this and and replace it with a sports bike again? Definitely not. I wouldn't. I wouldn't replace it. Um, I wouldn't replace it. Although I have to say, I did have. Uh, an adventure day, you'll see there's a video being posted in my channel uh, in the last uh, couple of days and it was me out on a, um, a tri- Triumph Tiger 1200 um, on a sort of adventure ride out day and I have to say the new Tiger 1200 is absolutely stunning really really nice, it's, it, it, if I was to describe the bike or compare the bike to this bike now, now I've, I've had a, I've, I'm quite lucky, I work in a Triumph dealership so I've had a lot of access to the, the Triumph Tiger and um, the only reason I don't have a Tiger is because I bought this before I started working in the Triumph dealership um, and the, the new Tiger wasn't available then at that point as well but um, but having ridden the Triumph Tiger, I think the Triumph Tiger is as comfortable as this bike it's definitely as comfortable but I think it's got more character and it's got a nicer, more dynamic engine in the bike as well it's, it's got, it's got, and I don't just mean that in the performance because I know it's got more horsepower but it just feels a wee bit more exciting um, I love the bark off the engine the, the sort of new T-plane triple crankshaft the engine that's in it it's got a really nice bark off it so if I was going to replace this bike if I was going to replace this bike I'd probably go for the Tiger if I'm honest um, but uh, but I'm not so <laughs> so that's irrelevant um, 
But I, if you keep your eyes on the channel, though, um, I've got, as I say, I do work in the Triumph dealerships. So I've got access to a lot of Triumphs, so I'm probably going to try and post some reviews on Triumphs this year. Take out various models of the Triumphs and, and post it up and let you see what they're like. <coughs> I'll do some reviews on them. But back to the GS. So the, G, the GS is magic. Uh, I went for the adventure model. Don't ask me why. Because um, I don't do loads and loads of touring. I just liked. I just liked the adventure. I just liked. I'm quite a big guy. 18 stone. Or 17 stone now actually. 17 stone. 6 foot. And uh, I just like the bulk of this bike, the size of it. It suited me. When I sat on it, I felt like it suited me. It fits me. Um, I've got the seat in the low position on the bike. It's not a low model. It's a full-size model. But I've got the seat in the low position. And I, I can't get f totally flat-footed, but I'm not far off it. I do feel in control. Um, my heels are slightly raised uh, on both sides, but... Um, but only by a half an inch or something like that. I feel I do feel I've got, uh, I've got lots of purchase on the ground, so um, so it's no problem in that respect. But I bought the adventure just because I like it. I went for the rat. Oh, in fact, I went for the triple black. But it was taking its time getting there, <coughs> um, and I was sort of let down a couple of times with a delivery date. And uh, I went into the showroom, and this one was sitting. It had just arrived, and I said, Do you know what? Give me that one. I quite like that one. I quite like. I, I used to have an R1 that had a white tank, and I love the white tank. Um, and I like having the white tank below me. Um, I had a black bike before, and I found the black paintwork was quite hard to keep. Although I still think the triple black one looks magic. I love the electronic suspension on it. But what I would say is, if you try and adjust, not the not the the riding modes, but if you try and adjust the uh, the leveling, like the auto, the high or the low, when you're on the move, it'll throw an error code on the bike, or it has done for me, I don't know if that's a, that just this bike or if that's a BMW thing, but it throws an error code up if you try and move that on the go, because my, my sister was on the back of me one day, and uh, I was trying to put it into the high setting, and I was trying to adjust it on the go, and it threw a, uh, a fault with a suspension, um, but I turned it off to the start of it and it went away, so, uh, and it done it a, a, another time when I tried to adjust it on the go as well. Uh, so that I would say is worth uh, watching out for. The brakes in the bike, it's got Hayes brakes this one and, and I find them brilliant. I find them absolutely brilliant, the bikes, the brakes. Uh, I know that um, they've switched them back onto Brembo's because of had issues with, the, with some of the Hayes calipers um, leaking but touch wood, mines are fine. Um, and I find the feel of them is brilliant, the stopping power on them is brilliant, I don't have any problem with them at all. Uh, this is me heading through uh, a little bit of sort of towny driving, I'm going up to um, a friend's house in Stirling, so um, I'm just doing a wee bit of towny driving and um, on wet, miserable, greasy, leavy roads in Scotland in, the, in December. That's all that about. One thing I did think, uh, when I get spoke wheels, I get, get gold spoke wheels this bike, so I'm sure you've seen. But when I got the spoke wheels, I thought, they look brilliant, I like them. And with the shaft drive, you shouldn't need to clean them very much because the the shaft drive will not throw it, you've not got oil thrown all over the back wheel and stuff like that. But for God's sake, I don't know why, they're, they're, they're always dirty. I clean them and then I go for a ride, even in the dry, I go for a ride and I come back and the wheels are blooming bogging again. And then every time I clean this bike, I end up skinning my knuckles or tearing skin off my hand with all the, the, the metal work and the framework that's on it and it doesn't matter how careful I am, I end up with slashed hands. Honest to God. Unbelievable. Well, it's at this point my mic decided to pack it in. I, I did say I wasn't very good at all this technical stuff. <coughs> but thanks for watching the video. Um, if I've earned a wee like or a subscription then please feel free to do so. As I said, I'm going to be posting up some more content over the next few months, um, specifically some Triumph and some adventure bike content. So if you've enjoyed the video and you want to hang about and see what else I, I, I post up, then please feel free to uh, stick a wee subscribe down and, and keep in the loop of what's happening. But thanks for tuning in, folks. Um, have a cracking Christmas uh, and uh, stay safe out in the bikes.